Hello YouTube, uh, this is Snack from Crow's Nest. Uh, Deck Devastators 4 just finished yesterday and you can check out the VOD on this channel but today I'm going to be going over some of the stats from the event. Uh, it was pretty fun. Uh, we got our boy Fitz from, the, from our team Crow's Nest to win the whole thing with dragons but here's some of the deck breakdown. Uh, first we have the deck representation like what people entered with. So we had 25 hero decks, 19 blackwing decks, 15 zombie decks, 13 value decks, 11 frog decks, 8 fairy, 7 light sworn, 7 machina, 6 dragon, 4 plant, like just some kind of variant of plant, uh, 4 quick draw, 3 synchro cat, 2 gemini, 2 glads, 2 monarchs, one final countdown, one flamvel, one monster mash, one rock, one stun, and one X saber. So those are all the decks that entered. We had 18% of the field was heroes, which usually I think Blackwing is the most popular. Uh, we have Zombie as the third most popular. Uh, it don't usually be these five are the most popular decks, and most people will think that those are the best decks as well, so it explains why they're so well represented. Uh, hero is broken down. You can break that down into Diva Hero or like Gemini Diva Hero or Diva Hero Beat as some people would call it. Um, and I, I have that later. So next I'll go into the win percentage like by deck. Hero has actually had the highest win percentage in this tournament with 56. And then Dragons with 54. 53 for Zombie. 50 for Light Sworn. 47 for value and frogs and blackwing and then fairies had 45 machina didn't do great with 38 everything else had fewer than five entrants so i didn't bother with that and then for the conversion rate uh what percentage of the entrants made top 12 16 percent of the people that entered with a dragon deck made top 12 that being only fits <laughs> uh 14 percent for light sworn 12 for hero 10 for Blackwing, 9 for Frog, and 6 or 7 for Zombie. So that's some of the broader stats. Um, something I wanted to do for this video specifically is I wanted to look at the decks, like the top 12 decks, the actual card by card breakdown. That's this page. Uh, there's a lot to see, but I have the top 12 decks and every single card in them is listed on here uh and how many copies how many copies are in the main and the side how many copies are just in the main um how many copies you're allowed to play per deck and like the percentage of the limit or whatever but now it's just for me to do some analysis so that i can pull out the interesting bits and have that highlighted in blue we have the cards that you would expect to see towards the top d prison bottomless caius and Ryko. Um, we had 22 copies of D Prison, and this includes the main and side. 22 copies of D Prison, 20 copies of Bottomless, 19 copies of Caius, 14 copies of Ryko in the top 12. But surprisingly, at least for me, 12 copies of Miracle Fusion in the top 12. So <laughs> they're averaging one copy of Miracle Fusion, despite there only being four decks that actually played the card. Uh, Hero Frogs, Diva Hero diva hero and like pure hero beat but i just thought that was interesting that this miracle fusion was more common than heavy storm mst brain control mirror force all those because you know obviously you can run three of it so then you this big green blob here is all the staples like i was saying heavy storm mst brain con mirror force solemn judgment gores trap dash shoe torrential all that but somewhere in the middle, you have Cyber Dragon. And what I found interesting about this is that there are actually 11 main deck copies of Cyber Dragon in the top 12. And that, I think that kind of goes to, we we're all expecting many people to be running heroes, and that was correct. Uh, and specifically, Diva Hero Beat. And I think Cyber Dragon's pretty good into that. If they go first, Diva into Catastor and just like let it sit there, you can Sidra into that. Or you can just have Sidra run over an alias. And then, of course, a lot of people had it on the side as well. So the next very interesting thing is, after all those staples, which you'd expect, 
like right after that, along with Book of Moon and Deep Sea Diva, Snowman Eater. That is a card that once again, I think it's like a counter meta, meta call kind of like, oh, I got this tech card because it counters the aggressive meta that we have with Blackwings and Heroes doing so well. There were 12 copies of Snowman Eater across the main and side in the top 12, and seven of them were in the main deck. So I think that's really interesting. And then the last card that we have is Call the Haunted. There are six copies in the top 12, and they're all in the main deck. I thought that these four cards stood out to me. Uh, right, be right below Call the Haunted, you have all the main deck Blackwing cards. So, and we had two Blackwing players top. You can see that here. Um, so the fact that Call and Snowman Eater are more popular than Blackwings is pretty interesting to me. So now we can go into the individual deck things, like breaking it down within deck categories. There are 16, or 16 of the Blackwing decks were pure. Three were with Greffer. Um, they both had around 50% win rate. For dragons, we had three tur uh, dragon turbo, two trap dragons, and one there was like a virus turbo dragon deck. Um, turbo had a 44% win rate, virus had a 33, and trap dragons had a 69% win rate. All right, so for fairies, my computer's being slow. <laughs> Uh, we had eight total, but six were pure and two were chaos fairies. The pure decks greatly outperformed the chaos with a 53% win rate. Chaos only had 13. For the frog decks, we had many different varieties as always. Uh, hero frogs, ancient gear frogs, monarch frogs, like, you know, 2010, very classic Flamevel Frogs with Frost and Flame Dragon. Uh, Spirit Frogs, that was a really cool list. And Dragon Frogs. <laughs> uh, yeah, four copies of Hero, two copies of Ancient Gear, two copies of like regular Frog Monarch, and then one of all the others. The ones that did the best were, surprisingly, Flamevel and Spirit Frogs both did well. They're one representative. And Hero Frogs, as expected, did pretty well. The others didn't have such a great time. Glad's there were like no glads this tournament, so we're skipping over glads. <laughs> Straight to hero. What everyone expected, there were 10 of the Diva Hero Beat deck. Seven of just Diva Hero, no uh, Gem Spark stuff. Three Hero Beat without Diva. Two Evil Hero for like Dark Gaia stuff. Uh, one Assault Mode Heroes. They're using the Diva or the Hero package just to make level eights really quickly and make Stardust Assault Mode. Uh, Coderis Hero, which had it had some Ancient Gear stuff in it too, but the Coderis with the alias stuff. And one new Aspatian Hero, similar to what Carpath topped the RBCT with a while back. The Diva Hero Beat had a 50% win rate. Diva Hero had a 60% win rate. The Hero Beat without D.Va, had a 66% win rate, Evil Hero, 55, Assault Mode, the one player on that deck had a 63% win rate, Coderis, 50, and New Spatian was 57. For Light Sworn, we had four Pure Light Sworn, two Fairy, like Christia Sworn, and one Flamvel Light Sworn. Uh, they're all around 50% win rate. For Machina, they didn't do so hot, I don't think. Um, we had three Machina Gadget, two Machina Control, the list with Raiko Hamster, Kaya's kind of stuff. Machina Cat and Machina with Beast King Barbaros. <laughs> Those both had one representative. Uh, the Machina Cat, only one player. It was Carpath. <laughs> uh, and that had a 60% win rate. The others all lost more than they won. We only had three cat players, but I thought I'd break it down since two of them made top cut. So we had two Chaos Cat and then one plant cat. And chaos had a 65% win rate and the plant had a 66% win rate. Somehow at all these tournaments, the single cat players continue to just do extremely well. And it's like been a consistent thing, but they still never get more than like five uh, entrants. So 
I, I don't know. It's somehow every time the, the cat decks perform well. And you saw actually in the Machina section that Machina Cat was the best Machina deck. Kind of funny. Uh, for Vayu, I mean, this is like barely a distinction, but we had 12 standard and then one with Elfin. Uh, the Elfin deck didn't win anything. And then for Zombies, we had eight Diva Zombie with no hero package. Three with uh, div or zombies with like psychics and well usually, like the well a dad deck. Two diva hero zombies, one chaos zombies and one zombies with plants. Uh, diva zombies had a fifty four percent win rate. The psychic version fifty nine, hero fifty, chaos fifty seven, and zero for the plants. So zombies, I think. That's, those are pretty good numbers for zombies. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to point out. The main thing that stood out to me, like if I had to take one takeaway, it would be this page and specifically Snowman Eater and Cyber Dragon. The fact that these are usually seen as sideboard cards and Snowman Eater isn't even that common of a sideboard card. And we were seeing them in a lot of, a lot of main decks. Usually they had some synergy with the deck, so... For Fitz's Dragons, uh, the Snowman Eater is a debris target. Uh, for Diva Hero decks, it's a water for absolute zero. For Frasier's uh, Frog deck, you can pitch it for Swap Frog or you can banish it with Miracle Fusion. So usually they didn't just throw it in for no reason at all. Uh, the Black Wing decks weren't playing it. But still, I think, I think that's pretty interesting to note. And then Cyber Dragon also... These two cards being in the main deck does counter the, you know, you might bring them in against heroes and blacklings. So it's interesting seeing them had them have so much success. These 12 players had so much success with those cards in the main deck. Um, anyways, that's pretty much everything. Uh, all the data crunching the numbers led me to those conclusions. And, oh, on the last two times I've done this, I did a little matchup table and all that, but honestly, that spent that took me like hours to fill that all in, and I'm not sure how useful the data was. I think for on Beast Modes, uh, War League, they're doing a matchup table for all throughout War League, and honestly, I think that's probably going to give be better data than the stuff I get from the tournaments. So I'm probably going to retire that. <laughs> so I apologize if you're hoping to see that, but probably not worth the time investment considering I think there's better data on the way. Yeah, so with that, thanks for watching. Uh, go check out the Deck Devastators 4 stream that I broadcast. And adios.